Hey guys, yeah, I know it's been a long time since I made a video and um Use a rasp to even out the surfaces before I glue the two halves together. Once I'm sure that the two halves are close enough as being identical, it's time to play with some 5 minute epoxy and glue these two halves together. After 10 to 15 minutes, it's time to open up the clamps and rasp away any excess glue and in general make the surface.
Uh, just have to uh, suck it up, I guess. You know, I have to say that sending wood is probably my least favorite part of lure making. But you gotta do it, there's no way around it, unfortunately. Now when my shad is still in this blocky state, it makes sense to mark where I need to cut the joints and what angle to do it. When I have my guidelines, it makes the sawing of the joints a little bit more easier. Well, at least for me. But uh, recently I have been using a block of wood as an aid to get my joints cut in the right angle. And again, oh boy, I wish I had a bandsaw. <laughs> would make things so much more easier. Shaping any kind of lure is where they start to come alive, and I don't know if I'm special or different, but even when I'm drawing the shape on paper, I can already see the finished lure in my mind. And I can even visualize pretty accurately how it's even going to swim in the water too, which is a little bit uh, strange. I've never heard of anyone else having that sort of a ability, but uh, I guess maybe it's... Uh, some, it has something to do with the fact that I have been making these lures for so long now that all of the mechanics and uh, things of that nature have basically become second nature to me. Well, whatever the case may be, uh, I'm happy I have these uh, special abilities, I guess you can call them. This shad swim bait is gonna have a clear resin tail, so naturally I need to make a slot for it. And I know some of you guys will have a brain aneurysm because of my reckless use of a drill, but trust me, I know what I'm doing.
Usually I like to drill the eye sockets before I start to do any major shaping. It's just much more easy to get everything lined up later when I start to comb the hint details. Since I'm a cheap bastard, just in order to set up the uh, sanding discs on my multi-tool, I usually get rid of the sharp corners with a knife first, and then move on to use my German Dremel clone. Now, did I already mention that I love this thing? Now, I'm sure if you're already subscribed to me, you've already seen in my past videos that uh, I use the original template as a stencil to transfer the head details onto the wooden lure. So I don't think I need to go too deeply into that now. So if you're interested, just go and watch those older videos where I go a little bit more deeply into uh, how I do it and why I do some of the things that you're seeing on the screen now.
I think nowadays the most fun part about lure making for me is that I get to add all of these wonderful little details on my bait. I don't know, there's just something so special about being able to make a block of wood come alive with just a small knife and a determined mind. But do any of us really need all of these details to catch fish? Absolutely not. But it sure does make your bait stand out, and in turn you will be much more confident, especially with big baits. Well, anyways, that is how it is with me. But uh, I'll shut up for a little while now, and uh, you can watch me carve. Don't worry, it's gonna be epic.
the longest and most nerve-wracking part is over, there's not much to do. I have been using the Skurai to Skurai connection on my jointed blurs for a couple of years now and I find it to be best suited for me. So now I'm making the locator holes to help me align the connection and this is really vital. If I screw up here, all of my work has been in vain. Although I probably probably could fix it if I did, but I'd rather not. Crafty, eh? Since this wooden bait is going to be a mold master, I've just bent some wire, the shape of a line tie and hook hangers that I will just glue to these uh, small holes that I've just drilled to accommodate the wire. Obviously, gonna make the mold itself, in which I will not go too deeply into again because I've already covered this on my channel in more detail. So, if you wanna see that, uh, go and check that out on my channel. Anyways, uh, there will be a few differences compared to the old one and uh, the one that I filmed, and uh, yeah, I just decided to add that in here too. Maybe some of you guys will get more. Uh, insight into how I make my molds nowadays. Thank you. 
very excited to see how they turned out. So fingers crossed that uh, uh, I didn't screw up anywhere. looks pretty good to me. Next up I'm going to weigh these things and I'm going to head down to the nearby river to test out the action. Alright, so the first test of the uh, new swim bait. And uh, this is literally the first time I'm actually casting this so let's hope it actually works. Oh yeah, definitely does work. I'm not too sure if you guys can see this, but it does definitely have a pretty decent glide on it. Ooh, and definitely seems to work too. Well, that's great. Uh, well, it seems to be a little bit nose heavy, but uh, I can definitely um, work on that when, when I actually start doing the uh, weight on the mold. So yeah, good next and uh, Since this is going to be a shad, I decided to paint a more of a natural colors first. And uh, after uh, maybe a few a few baits I can start going a little bit more nuts with the with the different color patterns. And I'm pretty sure this uh, bait itself the shape of it and all of that lends itself uh, into all kinds of different kind of color patterns which I'm pretty excited to paint. Okay, well that's pretty much all from me now, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope at least a couple of you guys were able to uh, sit through all of this, uh, I know, a pretty long video again, but uh, yeah, see you guys next time and uh, time flies.